Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Menashe. Our world is very confusing at the moment. Whatever thesis you create, you can find the evidence to support your point of view. Even a review of the headlines in the Wall Street Journal on a single day can be contradictory. Apple reports record revenue. Amazon forecasts falling sales, and their shares drop 12% in after-hours trading. The U.S. gross domestic product is up 2.6% in the third quarter. But there's maybe some manipulation in those numbers, and maybe those numbers will be subject to further revision. Export of oil from the U.S. was the largest contributor to the increase in GDP. This seems like a well-timed surge in exports. Turns out the U.S. has drawn down three-quarters of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve since earlier this year. In fact, the U.S. has been averaging an export of 8.63 million barrels a day throughout 2021. But in the third quarter of 22, those petroleum exports averaged 11.4 million barrels a day in July and 10.4 million barrels a day in August. During the same time period, the U.S. has been drawing down the Strategic Petroleum Reserve by an average of a million barrels a day since the second quarter. So it's hard to honestly take oil out of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve export it from the United States and then turn around and say, wow, look how strong our economy is. It seems dishonest in the extreme. Natural gas sells for about $9 per million BTU in the U.S., but with the energy crisis in Europe, shipping liquefied natural gas has become extremely lucrative. That same natural gas is now selling for over $70 per million BTU in parts of Europe, and in Germany in particular. This, too, has contributed to a surge in gross domestic product. But the U.S. only has the capacity to ship about 10% of its domestic natural gas production. It shipped 10% of domestic production in the fourth quarter of 2021, 10% in the first quarter of this year, 10% in the second quarter, and 10% in the third quarter. In fact, the amount of natural gas shipped has not changed hardly at all. You might even argue that it dropped after the fire at the Freeport LNG facility took a bunch of export capacity offline. Frankly, I hate the idea that I'm coming across sounding like some kind of lunatic conspiracy theorist. That's just not who I am, but the evidence is clear. I'm hoping my analysis is incorrect. In fact, I invite any listener who can point out that my analysis is incorrect to email me and show me exactly where I'm wrong. Let's look at other parts. In the same quarter, consumer spending dropped. Businesses slashed spending on buildings. and Residential investment fell at a 26.4% annualized rate compared with 2021. The Wall Street Journal reported that sales are down about 25% this year from the same period last year at Altus Brands, a company that specializes in goods for hunting and outdoor recreation. Intel is cutting jobs in response to a drop in demand for PCs. Google and Facebook are both reporting drops in advertising revenue. FedEx reported a drop in shipping volume and a drop in revenue. The stock lost 20% of its valuation in a single day on the warning. They issued forward guidance that, well... In fact, they couldn't even predict the future, so they suspended guidance altogether for the balance of the year. The parade of bad news from corporations is coming with alarming regularity. Boeing lost $3.3 billion in the last quarter, partly on the write-down of its Air Force One delivery, partly on its investment in Starliner, and a drop in 737 deliveries based on supply chain issues. Goldman Sachs is reorganizing itself into three business units, combining the trading desk and the investment banking unit into a single business unit. The company was trading at 0.9 times book value, compared with its peers at Morgan Stanley at 1.4 times book value and J.P. Morgan at 1.3 times book value. This low valuation at a pillar of Wall Street tells a story about how the market is viewing the outlook for financial institutions with a heavy emphasis on investment banking. The European Central Bank doubled its interest rate from three quarters of a point to one and a half percent yesterday. The Bank of Canada increased its benchmark rate by half a point, with the overnight rate now at three and a quarter and the bank rate at four percent. The Fed is widely expected to increase rates by another three quarters of a point at its rate setting meeting next week. And finally, we know that the measure of GDP is based on a calculation. That calculation is a simple one. You take the nominal GDP minus the rate of inflation in order to get real GDP. But we know that the consumer price index is underreported. And I'll give you a simple example. In fact, we could dedicate an entire week to explaining how the consumer price index is calculated, but we're just going to look at one today. Healthcare makes up 19.5% of the economy, but it only makes up 8.487% of the consumer price index. 
since health care costs tend to rise faster than other parts of the economy, underreporting the CPI makes it look like the economy is growing faster than it truly is. By underreporting CPI, since you subtract that, you're overreporting GDP. As I reflect on the last few minutes of analysis, understanding our economy is actually not that confusing at all. We only have one piece of data that contradicts the overwhelming amount of data that says our economy is actually shrinking. The rosy GDP report is wrong. That's the only conclusion you can draw. To conclude anything else means 1 plus 1 is not 2, and 2 plus 2 is something other than 4. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.